Hello, and welcome to Will's Infinite Library. I'm Will, and this is my Infinite Library. I've been thinking recently about that name, Will's Infinite Library, and I, I kept the name Infinite because I started a podcast with the name Infinite in the title and wanted to like stay on brand, and I thought it sounded cool. But as I think about it more, I think it's fitting because I think a lot about how many books are out there in the world. Not my books, I just have my name on it because, you know, the name Infinite Library was already taken. So I think this is all of our libraries, like this collective library in the world of all these books. There's so many books out there, more than you could ever read in a lifetime. And they really are infinite because they just keep, more books keep being written, more books keep being published all the time. And I think a lot about like, there must have been some point in history when you could have read all the books that existed. But today, there are definitely too many books. And even if there was that point in time, probably it was way before globalization and there were books being published around the world in languages that a lot of people couldn't speak. So it's very unlikely, I think, that there was ever a point in time when a single person had read all of the books that existed, unless it was like the first book that was ever written or the first handful. Yeah, I've been thinking about that as I think about what, it, what really is an infinite library. It's kind of discouraging when you just like so many books that you want to read and your TBR list just grows and grows and grows. But it's also exciting too, isn't it, to think that there's just this infinite amount of books and ideas and people sharing their stories around the world. I think that's really cool and exciting. So let's journey forth to infinity and beyond. So I wanted to make this video today because my video about Jitterbug Perfume being my favorite book of all time has been getting some traction and getting some comments from you and I wanted to kind of follow up on that. And I wanted to give a big thank you to Steve and to everyone from that community who came over here and checked out that video and my other videos. You guys have been awesome and it's been really great interacting with you and hearing what some of your favorite books are and keep it coming. I keep, I want to hear them. Don't stop. <laughs> and a huge thank you to Steve as well. He took that video that I did and kind of took it to the next level of making it into a tag of your favorite book of all time, keeping it to 15 minutes and just sharing with the world. And as I was watching his video, I realized how fun and exciting it is just to watch someone talk about something that they're really excited about. Check out that video. I'll link to Steve's video here and down below in the description. So check that out. Let us know your favorite book. Um, or books if there's more than one. The, the tag is favorite book, but I know that's really hard. And I think for some people it's easy and for some people it's hard. And I think both are completely valid. So either way. So one of the comments I got on the video was from Fraser Simons at Springboard Thought, who asked, is this a good entry to the author? And I thought that was a really good question. And it made me think more too about where is the best place to start with Tom Robbins books if you have not read any before. I think Jitterbug Perfume is a pretty good starting point, but I, there are so many books, so many different stories and ideas, and every person is unique. Everyone's gonna have a different favorite book. And I just wanted to share some kind of ideas and recommendations for you about where might be the right place to start for you. So I wanted to quickly just go through each of his main novels and then tell you a little bit about each one. And then after that, kind of make some recommendations about where might be a good place to start if none of those kind of gripped you and you said, oh, that's the one for me. So let's get right to it. So I think I'll go in chronological order here because that's how I think in terms of books a lot of the time. So first up is Another Roadside Attraction. This was Tom Robbins' first novel. It feels a bit rougher because it is a first novel, very kind of fragmented and almost experimental in some ways. It features like a quirky, diverse cast and it's kind of trying to capture the like wild frenetic energy and like excitement for change of the 1960s and so it's very like rooted in this kind of hippie culture but there's also like government conspiracies going on and that kind of thing so there's a lot to like from different perspectives 
The premise is that Jesus's body is discovered and is like on display at a roadside attraction. So all of the religious implications that come with that are kind of explored and, you know, what it means to, I don't know, have to pave a new way forward with new information in the world. Uh, and again, just this wild frenetic energy of the 60s, this excitement for life and for change. I think change is a big part of it. It's a really, it's an imperfect work, but it's really beautiful. And there's a lot of really cool stuff here. So that is another roadside attraction. Next, still going chronologically, is Even Cowgirls Get the Blues. This is the only one of his books that has been made into a movie. Um, kind of awkward movie that I don't know if it holds up very well, but a movie. Um, it's about a cowgirl, Sissy Hankshaw, who has giant thumbs and uses them to hitchhike. And she takes hitchhiking to an artistic level. And there's this quote in the book that I love so much. I actually titled my blog, my neglected blog after it called The Wildest Edge. And the quote is this, if you take any activity, any art, any discipline, any skill, take it and push it as far as it will go. Push it beyond where it has ever been before. Push it to the wildest edge of edges. Then you force it into the realm of magic. I just love that quote because that's what this book captures for me is this idea that life can be art and the things that you do, the way that you live, um, the things that you're good at, the things that you do that no one else can do, no matter how mundane or, you know, how unimportant you feel they are, you're living art. Your life is something unique and beautiful that the world hasn't seen before. And it just captures this amazing feeling. And I love this idea that anything can be art and that life can be art. Funnily enough, I actually did a podcast episode recently with my sister, um, who is an art educator and artist herself, about art and what art is and isn't. I will link to that here as well in the description below. Next on our list, Still Life with Woodpecker. I think Still Life with Woodpecker is one of the more conventional books and I'm laughing at myself as I say that because none of them are conventional at all but like I feel like it has a tight storyline and arc that is a bit more mainstream maybe and easier to relate to like if any of them were a movie I feel like this one would probably be the best movie no shade to even cowgirls get the blues so still life with woodpecker is basically a love story and it's a really interesting love story it tips a bit into fantasy as well, and into this weird, surreal kind of absurdism. Like, even Cowgirls Get the Blues and another book that I'll be talking about very soon, Explore Art. This one really explores love and what love is. So there's a quote from this book that I really like, which is, we waste time looking for the perfect lover instead of creating the perfect love. And so that's kind of where this book comes from, this place of trying to understand what love is and there's a lot of talk about like how to make love stay there's a lot of really beautiful poetic language that gets at these really romantic ideas and romantic in terms of of romanticizing the ideas themselves more than romantic love though this book also is that as well and the weird part of it is that some of it takes place inside a pack of cigarettes inside the like picture on the front which this cover art is kind of illustrating. So that's weird. That's the unconventional part of the book. All right, and then talking about art again, this book, Skinny Legs and All, is the most focused on art of any of his books. It's concerned with what art is, and it has a great quote. I think it says, in the haunted house of life, art is the only stair that doesn't creak. And when I think about what art is, I love that, that idea. And this book is really beautiful and I would recommend it to anyone who is an art fan, art fiend, art lover. And it's kind of about, I don't want to put words in its mouth, but it's kind of about art and culture. And there's this mystical dance of the seven veils that shroud reality. And as each veil drops, you get closer and closer to seeing the truth. And this dance is happening and is scheduled conflicting with Super Bowl Sunday. And there's just a lot of kind of commentary on like what is really important to us versus what we think is really important to us as a society. 
and that kind of thing. There are also a lot of inanimate objects that are characters in this book. It's another weird one, another great one. Now we have arrived at Half Asleep in Frog Pajamas. And like the weird title, this is one of the weirder ones, I would say. It's one of the most experimental as well, probably next to another roadside attraction, which was experimental in that first novel kind of way. This one's just plain kind of experimental. It's told in second person, which is really weird because it makes it feel like the narrator's talking to you as a reader, but they're actually talking to you as a character. And there's kind of this weird dynamic there, like it kind of messes with my brain that I think they're talking to me, but like, no, I'm this character, which is interesting because it kind of feels like an interactive story in that way. Like you're playing a video game or reading a choose your own adventure story, but the characters are being created for you as the main character of the story. This one has a lot to do with weird alien conspiracy theories as um, Still Life with Woodpecker does as well, if you're into that sort of thing. Um, I am, I like, I enjoyed that. There is one really cool part that I love of this book that always stands out in my mind. Okay, this is the part of this book that sticks in my head the most that I really love. We modern human beings are looking at life, trying to make some sense of it, observing a reality that often seems to be unfolding in a foreign tongue. Only we've all been issued the wrong librettos. For a text, we're given the Bible or the Talmud or the Quran. We're given Time Magazine and Reader's Digest, Daily Papers, and the Six O'Clock News. Unfortunately, none of these translations bears more than a faint resemblance to what is transpiring in the true theater of existence, and most of them are dangerously misleading. And I just really love that idea of like, I've talked about it before, this idea of like avid readers kind of searching for truth or knowledge or acceptance or all the answers to life in books and trying to find the next one, the right one, the one that's going to click, the one that's going to make sense. And I think that this really captures that because it talks about this kind of dissatisfaction we have and why we're looking for answers because we feel something is off and we need answers. We need more. We need some set of directions for our lives. But if we're not like devoutly religious people, and even if we are still, there's answers we're looking for that aren't handed to us. And we keep searching for them in books, in anything around us, anywhere we can find them. And it does often feel like we've been duped and given like the wrong set of instructions everywhere we look. So I think that's a really cool, insightful, and kind of funny way of looking at it. And again, that really sums up Tom Robbins to me. It's like very thoughtful and reflective on society and the world we live in, but looking at it while kind of chuckling at it, which is great. Oh, also I skipped Jitterbug Perfume, I just realized. It's there, you know all about it. I'll link to my video here uh, so you can check that one out. I've talked plenty about it already. So we will move on then to Fierce Invalids Home from Hot Climates. This was actually the first Tom Robbins book I read, I think because it was the newest one at the time and it was in all the bookstores. This is a weird one. It's kind of like a CIA adventure story, but from Tom Robbins. So really quirky and weird and not what you expect from the words that I just said at all but it's really interesting. Switters is a cool character. My favorite thing that really made me click with Switters himself is he talks about not liking to think of his internal organs, which really creeps me out as well. And he imagines himself powered by a giant crystal that's inside of him. And I'm like, yes, I want that to be true because I don't want to think about internal organs either. They are gross. So, but the, the most meaningful thing about this book to me is kind of a mantra that's repeated throughout it, which is people of the world relax. It's just, it just helped me through some like kind of tense, anxious times in my youth. And just repeating that phrase, I, I was a skater kid and I wrote, I wrote that quote on my skateboard in whiteout on the grip tape. And that quote I think is also really kind of emblematic of the Tom Robbins philosophy of like not taking life too seriously and somehow finding meaning in not looking for it. It's just there. Okay, we are actually winding down. I think this is the last real novel from Tom Robbins. I hope not ever, but it's very possible because he started doing more kind of collected works and different kinds of things. So this is the last real novel. 
sad face. Feel it incognito. I'm not really sure what to say about this one. It feels more like kind of a folk tale or more like a fable than the other books. Uh, I think Jitterbug Perfume gets to that point at a few moments as well, but this one like through and through. Um, it feels more like that. It's a lot shorter than the other works, and I think kind of because of that, because that is a piece of Jitterbug Perfume, but that's the whole book here, so it's kind of expanded. And it takes place in Southeast Asia, and Tanuki is a character who's an actual Tanuki. It's really weird. It's, I would say, the least gripping in a lot of ways. I, like, I really don't know what to say about this one, honestly. It's the one I've read the least. I've probably read it twice, I'm guessing, but most of them I've read at least three to five times. And this one, the least, I remember it the least. And I'm just going to read you the inside flap, like a brief piece of that. It says, imagine that there are American MIAs who chose to remain missing after the Vietnam War. Imagine that there is a family in which four generations of strong, alluring women have shared a mysterious connection to an outlandish figure from Japanese folklore. Imagine those things... Don't even try to imagine the love story, and you'll have a foretaste of Tom Robbins' eighth and perhaps most beautifully crafted novel. I, I don't really have much to say about this one, I'm sorry. I have a couple collections here, Wild Ducks Flying Backward and yeah, Tibetan Peach Pie, which just share some of his short writings and some kind of autobiographical essays and that kind of thing. Really interesting if you're into Tom Robbins. Um, I would definitely say don't start with those though. But if you read some of the other books and you're more interested and want to read more, then yes. I read them because I'd read everything else and I needed more. But definitely, I would say not the place to start. But on that note, let's talk about where you should start. Maybe as you've been watching this, one or more books jumped out at you and you know where to start already. But where I started was Fierce Invalids Home from Hot Climates. And so I think it doesn't really matter because I don't think this is a great place to start, honestly. It's not as representative of his other works or his best works. There are things to love. There are things that are very Tom Robbins about it. And it holds a special place in my heart because it was the first one I read and there were some parts that had a lot of meaning to me. But overall, I would say not probably the best place to start. It's I think it's one of the longer books. So it, it took me a while to get through. I think I read it slower than a lot of other books. Again, yeah, I think probably not the best place to start, though I did. So take that for what it's worth. Also, Half Asleep in Frog Pajamas, I would say probably not the best place to start because like I said, it is kind of weirder in the writing. So it's a little harder to read as well because of that second person. It feels a little watered down, honestly, compared to his other works. It's not as jam packed with cool stuff, but there is some really cool stuff in it. So definitely worth reading both of these books. But again, like, I think you should start somewhere else to get a better sense of, like, the magic and, like, amazing, amazingness of his other books first. And then when you need more, come to these. Villa Incognito I will put in that category as well. There's cool stuff here. I need to reread it, honestly, because I couldn't talk much about it. And it doesn't stand out to me as much. So again, another one to read once you've read other books and just need more. That brings me to, of course, Jitterbug Perfume, like I said in my other video. And thinking about it more in that question, I think it is a good place to start. I also think that Skinny Legs and All can be a good place to start. It's a bit more accessible. Still Life with Woodpecker is probably the most accessible, I would say. So this could be a really good starting point if you're not sure if you'll like these books and it'll you'll probably get into it quicker you'll probably just click with it it'll be easier to just dive in and get in the headspace even calcos get the blues i would say it could be a good starting point but probably better as like at least the second or third of his books you read because it's a bit different and i don't know i think you just need a little background first uh, another roadside attraction again I really enjoy it. I would say probably don't read it first because again, it's not really representative of his works. I think Jitterbug Perfume, or no, maybe Still Life with Woodpecker was where he really gained his voice and we get the best of the best through and through. The, these other books have like, much of the books are great or most of them are, are great or they have great moments. But these books like Still Life with Woodpecker, I would say, Skinny Legs and All and Jitterbug Perfume would be my recommendations of the first Tom Robbins book to read. Any of those you can get your hands on. I would say these two are honorable mentions just because this is the first book. And if you like to start with first books, 
then you might like to start with it. But I wouldn't say it's the best first one of his books to read. And again, this one is good. It's also a movie. If you're a film buff, you might enjoy reading it first and then checking out the movie. But yeah, that's that's kind of my recommendation of where to start. I think it depends on which one grips you the most, but those would be my top three picks. Either Jitterbug Perfume, Still Life with Woodpecker, and Skinny Legs and All. And if you're really not sure, I would say Jitterbug Perfume because it's my favorite. If you enjoyed my video, you'll probably like it. And if you were like kind of on the fence, maybe Still Life with Woodpecker would be the best place to start because it is probably the most conventional and straightforward. And Jitterbug Perfume jumps around in time and place a lot. So it can be a little disorienting if you're not into that. Um, you might want to start with Still Life with Woodpecker for a more just kind of traditional storyline that's going to grip you and, and send you right through. I think it's one of the shorter books too, so it's a pretty quick read. So those are my recommendations of where to start getting into Tom Robbins books. And I tried to offer a little bit of kind of direction too. If maybe you've read one or two already and you don't know what to read next, some ideas of like the first few to read and then the next ones to read. And then the ones to get to, you know, when you have time, when you've exhausted everything else and you need more. And if you if you're like me and you've read them all and need more, there's a couple collections here. There's also B is for Beer, which is a children's book about beer. I don't have a copy of that one, but that exists. And it is also a musical, apparently. So you can find that wherever you listen to music. Um, if you like musicals, <laughs> Fierce Invalids, Home from Hot Climates, um, Sweaters, the main character, is a fan of Broadway musicals, so you might like that. Just throwing that out there. So yeah, those are my recommendations of where to start with Tom Robbins books. Again, let me know if you've read any of these or if you have any more questions and follow-ups to this that you are curious or you want to know more about, feel free to drop me a comment below and I'll be happy to talk much more about any of these books. If you want me to make a video about any specific books or anything more on this topic, let me know. If there are any other authors that I've talked about that you want me to kind of do a video like this about, let me know that as well. And of course, I'd love to hear your favorite books too. I'll link again to that video here um, about Jitterbug Perfume and to Steve's video as well, so you can check out his favorite book. And I think that is it for today. Thank you so much for joining me and listening to me talk about these books that I love so much. And if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe, drop a comment below, and just thank you so much. I can't thank you all enough for subscribing, for watching, for sharing. Thank you again to Steve. Thank you all so much. I'll see you next time.